All right. So good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, and what a beautiful Sunday morning. We're all glad you're here. We have a really wonderful service um, uh, about African culture with uh, our guest speaker, Ansumana Komba Bembo and uh, special music with uh, Tasana Kamara, who's also from West Africa, and Brian Head, who is from Northwest Hi. Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you have a bell, I urge you to get it out. And we'll start uh, with our bell ringing. So get your bell out. And this is the one point in the service where everybody becomes unmuted and we can hear everybody's bells. Uh, so. so with the sound of bells, we welcome stranger and friends to a time of mindfulness. Ring your bells. And uh, welcome Brian Head to sing the welcoming song. Lost the sound. <laughs> Brian, I think you got muted by mistake. Uh, Kent, why don't you unmute yourself? Okay. Can you hear there me now? Go. Yep. You want me to do it over again? Yeah. Okay. Whoever you are, we welcome you. Wherever you come from, we welcome you. Whomever you love, we welcome you. Whoever you are, we welcome you. Wherever you come from, we welcome you. Whomever you love, we welcome you. Whomever you love, we welcome you. Whomever you love, we welcome you. Thank you, Brian. That was beautiful. And indeed, we welcome everybody. I, I think we have some folks who are here for the first time with us this morning. We especially welcome you. So uh, we have, um, as I was talking with Ansumana about what, what we should say for the opening words, um, he had really interesting things to say about the name for God in his mother tongue, Kono. So Ansumana, uh, and then following this, Tasana, after Ansumana talks, we'll let you do your song about guests. Uh, but first, Ansumana, tell us about the word for God in Kono. Ansumana, you need to unmute yourself. Ansumana, we can't hear you. Can you unmute yourself? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. There okay. You Very good. Yes, I, I just want to start with uh, saying uh, this is like uh, welcome to Sierra Leone and uh, greetings from Sierra Leone. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see me? Or... We can see you. Yeah, yeah, we can see you. Okay. So can you see the map here? 
Not very well. You don't, right now your internet connection isn't very strong. So you, we'll just have to rely on your voice. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Well, uh, my name is Ansumana Kumbad Bembo. I was born and raised in Sierra Leone, Konoji Street, Freetown. Uh, in my language, the name God is a, is a meaning that, uh, the, the name means meaning and the meaning means uh, something. That means you met, you met him. Yata, in our language, is you met him. So if you say hi to somebody, whatever the answer is, Kasiya Tamo. Kasiya Tamo means we thank God. Ah. There is no other way to answer you but we thank God. So to say God is we met him. Because mm -hmm. no matter about human being, there is no human who say, I was there here before. So that's how we call God. We met him. That's the saying in my language, Yata. Yata. I don't know if that sounds, yes. Yata. Uh -huh. so, so the word for God is we, meet, we met him because, he, because God was we the first. Him. Yes. Everything else yes. followed. He created him. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and he created everything. And in your, uh, and so when somebody greets you in your mother tongue, uh, they say, yeah. how are you? Your answer is always, thank God. Thank God, yes. Thank God. That's yes. always the answer. That's beautiful. That's thank me. you, Ansumana. Yes, thank you. Yes. We'll hear more about, more from Ansumana a little, in a little bit. Uh, Tasana, are you ready to play the song? Uh, you said you were going to uh, do a song about guests, about welcoming guests. Can you unmute yourself, Tasana, and play that song? Tasana, we can't hear you. Yeah, you need to unmute yourself, Tasana. Yeah, we can't hear you, Tasana. You need to unmute yourself. Yeah. There we go. Yes, now we can hear you. Can you do your song about welcoming guests? Say what? Can you play your song about guests? To play the song now? Yes, play the song now. About what? About guests. <laughs> to have a guest, to welcome a guest. To or play, play now, it, or you can yes play any song now. That's fine.
Tasana, that is really, really beautiful. Tasana Kamara, everybody, is from Guinea, West Africa. Uh, and now he, he lives in Erie. And okay. Yeah, it's beautiful. Very beautiful. So, very beautiful. And we'll hear more from Tasana. Okay. Uh, yes, we'll hear another song in a little bit. Uh, okay. We'll hear another song in a little bit. Next song. Not yet. I will let you know when it is time. Okay? Just wait. You'll do another song. Okay. Just wait, I'll let All you right. know when, okay? All right, so. Okay. Beth. Thank we you. Have, yes, we have, uh, the, so the uh, chalice lighting and the chalice extinguishing and the closing words all come from the same minister. It's uh, part of a, 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 a reading that she wrote, Tanya Marquez from, uh, from San Diego. Beth, well, I'll let you lead it. From the heights of the Andes, the jungle and the desert, from the depths of the sea, from a time that was, from a time that stretches beyond our memory, we are called. Our histories stretch back to the first people, the first steps, the collision of worlds to abrupt beginnings, all wanderers of this land. We have inherited the unfinished labor of our ancestors, of those that came before us. 
We are called to continue the work. And uh, let's all do, even though people are muted, you can do the children's bond and the 1898 bond. Uh, we can say it with along with Beth. We are Unitarian Ten. Universalists, Versus. a people of open mind, loving hearts, and welcoming hands. And uh, the 1898 bond of union. We unite ourselves together for the study and practice of morality and religion as interpreted by the growing thought and noblest lives of humanity, believing that we may thereby prove helpful one to another and promote the cause of truth, righteousness, and love in the world. Thank you, Beth. Thank you. So, Ansumana, uh, I met him, I want to say, close to 10 years ago. Uh, I met him when I was working uh, in my capacity at the uh, Erie Art Museum as the folk art director. <laughs> and uh, I was told he was a tailor, and, uh, and he does, uh, I discovered that he does beautiful, beautiful work and creative work, and he's very articulate about his tradition. And so this, uh, he is now the, the third in a number of speakers um, who are all mo Muslim, who are part of a project that I'm doing with Erie Arts and Culture uh, to help artists from Muslim countries who now live in Erie to share their story and share their art with the wider community. So Ansumana will start, and he has two short presentations. The first one is him giving his history and then we'll hear a little bit of music by Tasana, and then Ansumana will uh, talk about his art form as a clothing designer. So Ansumana, are you still with us? Yes. All right. Can you hear me? Yes, right. can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you. Yes, uh, so uh, what do you want me to start with? So why don't you tell us uh, a little bit of your history? Where were you born? How did you end up coming to Erie, Pennsylvania? Yeah, okay. Yes, I was born in uh, the Republic of Sierra Leone, as, like, as I said, I started with. And we had war in, 19, in 1991, and we were out in 92. We were from the uh, rich diamond area, Connor District. So we went to Guinea. And return back and run again and return back. The last time I left there was 95. I can't and see him. Came, uh, I can't see him. So, uh, yes, um, I think he, he's having trouble with, um, Antamana does not have a strong internet connection right now. So, Al, you can't see him because he doesn't have strong enough internet. But it will come back when the oh, internet uh, is stronger. Yes, it will come back when the internet is stronger. All right, okay. so, so uh, uh, you still can yeah. see me. No, we can't see you, but that's still, okay. Still can see me? We no, we okay. can't see you, but your internet isn't very strong. I think that's why. Right. Yeah, so don't worry about it. We'll just continue. We'll see you. I know we will see you later in the service. So right. yes. Okay. So you were saying you so, were um, there was a civil war in Sierra Leone in the nineties. Uh, and you you are from Kono, a very rich diamond mining district. Continue on, Sumana. Uh, now, on Sumana, you are muted. You need to unmute yourself. For some reason, you are muted. You need to unmute yourself. We can't hear you. Ansumana, can you hear us? We can't hear you. You need to unmute. There you go. Now you're unmuted. Excellent. I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. 
Uh, well, you can't see me, right? Not yet, but don't worry about it. There's nothing uh, we can do about it. Uh, okay. Your video is so, on. It will come in when your internet is stronger. I can see him now. Okay. Oh, good. So, so we had love, uh, 1991, while I was in high school. I'm from a chief family. My grandfather was a chief. His name was Komad Bembo. My father is a chief right now. His name is Komad Bembo. And I'm Asumana Komad Bembo. If I, if I told the United States, I would say Asumana Komad Bembo 1, Komad Bembo 2, and Komad Bembo 3. I will be the three. So it's like a, it, it passed on. So when we had war, it came from uh, Liberia, because the war started in Liberia and when, when they crossed in Sierra Leone, we are attacked because of, we are the vulnerable uh, districts that contains diamond. And we were chased out and uh, come, we came back in 1993 and we were chased out. We came back in 1994, we chased out since 95. We left for Guinea. That's where we became a refugee. After becoming, becoming a refugee, uh, the United, United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees offer training for refugees, uh, like students or kids who want to learn. So I was uh, fortunate to go for sewing. My mother uh, encouraged me to go for that. So after get, uh, getting that certificate, but well, because of our was in Guinea, and Guinea, this is a country, I left Sierra Leone to Guinea, to Gambia, and now United States. So because of Guinea, it's a French country, and I've already learned English from scratch to high school. It's gonna be difficult for me to learn French. Well, I speak the local languages. I speak six languages. I can become a citizen in any one of them. No one will dispute me. But you need a, an international language in those countries to survive, to really get into offices. So I can't, I won't be able to do that. So I heard about a refugee camp in Gambia. I, try, I asked, asked some of my friends who are apprentices. They are Guineans. So I traveled with a Guinean uh, ID card as a Guinean because the refugee is not supposed to travel. Where you are, that's where you should stay. So I travel as a Guinean uh, to Gambia and I happen to declare myself as a Salonian and I seek asylum there. I was there for at least two years and I got sick with kidney stones. They, they did the surgery and they said, they can't take care of all the two stones. Yeah, there was three stones and the two, they can't, uh, the doctor don't want to destroy my kidney. He said, I need a international uh, recommendation so that they can do it in the Western world, whether Britain, Europe, or America, or Australia, somewhere there. So the United Nations High Commissioner put my, my name for resettlement. So I was there for 10 years waiting for that. Right, uh, last 2009, I was called that United States uh, uh, choose me. So the, the doctor recommend they should send me because Gambia was hot. So I was finding it difficult to, to, to uh, contain the pain there because it's too hot. If I drink, no matter how many gallons of water I drink, it's like I'm not drinking nothing. It dries out. So he, he recommended that they should send me to a cold place. I never know it was big, it's gonna be cold like here. <laughs> so when I came here, I said, why well, is it like a freezer? I've never been in a fridge before. So now they take me from hot to a freezer. So I came here, they did the surgery. My first time to see snow, all of that uh, winter, I don't want to go out. Because I've never, I've never used to a cold like that. But I have to adjust myself. That's how I find myself here. I did not choose to come to Erie. But I choose to stay here because it's second to my home. If they say you are reborn, I was born in Sierra Leone. Now I've been born here. So we don't move. We don't travel. We are Kono. We are host. We host everybody from all over the world. People go to mine in our place. We give you land. We give you woman. We give you place to work. You can look for yours. Whatever you get, that's yours. So we don't travel. We don't move. So that's why I decided to stay here. 
Since then, I've been here to this day. That's how I find myself in the United States. Hey. Being a refugee is not, is not an easy task. Yeah, Shirley. Yeah, beautiful. That's what. Well, yes, what a story. So you and you were and you were young. You had just finished high school when your family had to leave, right? Y yes. So all of that that time yes. where so you weren't able to go on to college. Had you stayed, had there not been a civil war in Syria alone, you might have gone to college. But you said your mother uh, said you should you should be you should make clothing uh, because you needed a trade. You were a young man. You needed a trade. You were as stuck as a as a refugee and. Uh, and and you became you became a tailor uh, and a clothing designer and you and we in Erie are very fortunate that you've continued that art here. So um, before you talk about that art as a as a clothing designer, Tasana, are you still with us? Uh, you can play another song for us. Tasana, are you with us? So, Tasana, you need to unmute yourself. There you go. So, can you play another song for us? You had said that you would uh, perhaps yes. sing Tunka Malebalon. Uh, you, had, you had told me about the song Tunka Malebalon, correct? Tasana, we can't hear you. Tasana. Tasana. We can't hear you. Tasana, we can't hear you. There we go. No, you're still muted. Tasana, you're still muted. <laughs> okay, so I think what we'll do, uh, um, Tasana, you're still muted. 
There we go. Tasana, that was beautiful. So I had uh, mentioned in the chat box that uh, uh -huh. Tassan, uh, so your instrument is called the Kora, correct? You're playing the Kora. People want to know. Yeah, I play the Kora. Yes, yes. Can you turn it so we can see a little more of your instrument? Can you turn it, Tasana? Aha, it has your name on it. Yes. Yeah, and it is uh, the Cora is yeah, a harp. Now. Yeah, and it is a uh, harp. It has twenty-one strings on it. Another song? Uh, not yet. You'll play another song in a little bit. Just wait. There's another time for you to play. I can use the bathroom. Yes, you can. <laughs> yes. Now is it? Now you okay, can take thank a break. You. Yes. So, uh, Ansumana uh, yeah. and Jill, if we can bring up the PowerPoint. All right, so I know that Ansumana, you have spoken a lot about how you really think about African culture once you get to the United States. Uh, the best, one of the best ways to learn about your own culture is to uh, learn about other cultures uh, and, 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 you're, and you get to compare them. Uh, so Ansumana, you, you had said that there was no color boundary in Africa. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, uh, well, in Africa, we believe all colors are belong to human or belongs to the world. There is no color, as you say, although, yes, in uh, the America here, they have colors for men, girls, boys, girls. Color is a color. If I like pink, I like pink. If I like purple, I like purple. So if, for instance, I have a deodorant and I went to the store to choose a cotton and that cotton have uh, purple and pink in and I want everybody to wear the same kind that we call it I shall be. A, a man is not gonna say, no, no, I don't wear that because I'm a, I'm a man, no? That means you don't, you don't wanna be in my, in my uh, gathering or what I'm inviting you for. Sometimes we buy it and give it to people. Sometimes we tell them to buy themselves. We just have to choose one kind. Just like you see on the photo here, I can choose one color there for my wedding ceremony or my name, uh, naming a child or my celebration or anything. I said everybody should wear the same kind, just like a t-shirt. So no, one, no one's gonna say, no, I'm a man, I can't wear that color. They will wear it because color is color. It, ju it just depends how you take it in your head. Because we all, we, no, all these colors were in this world before human being was created. So who, who would say this belongs to a woman or this belongs to a man? You see men wearing pink. If you go to Africa, you see men, men wearing pink, you say, oh man, this is a, 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 a girl color. He will tell you, well, buy me the man color. So what will you do? Will you buy him the man color? <laughs> you just have to let him be because he's a color. He, he will choose the way, but maybe that's the only thing he got. Maybe that's the only color he like. So we don't choose much color. But here, when I came here, you he wear this and say, oh, this for girls. I got confused. I said, I don't even know what to wear here. You wear this color, this for girls. You wear this, this for boys. So where, where, where do I belong? And African fabrics, as you can see here, it has different, different colors, like this. It has some little pink ink. I can wear this. But maybe in America, somebody will say, no, I got this got pink, I'm not gonna wear it. It's your, it's, your, it's your thinking, it's your way. So I'm not gonna argue or tell you, encourage you, because that's the way you, you know. But in Africa, you give this to a man, he'll be really happy to wear it. 
I'm proud to wear it because it's our fabric. Huh. So that's how we choose the colors. Yes, Thank wonderful. You. How about the next slide, Jill? So, you, uh, this yes, is uh, our... like for this. Uh huh. Tell us about this. Yeah, suit. This is, yes, this is, uh, in Africa, most, most people, most of our, uh, like our forefathers, what they know about people who wear suits a lot, they call them criminals because they say when you are educated, you become a criminal or somehow, it, uh, you know, somebody who crooks, who is a crook. Because they think all educated people are crooks because they can manipulate you and take something from you without you knowing it. So know that we don't dress like uh, within the suit. But if you want to really be loved, if you, you should dress in African, uh, batik African clothing. If you wear suit, 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 every time they, one, there is a big girl, be somebody who say this guy or this woman is a crook, some way, somehow, because we don't know suit. It's Western, it's Western uh, dress. All we know, dashikis, abakos, another way of showing things. We, we're not used to suit, suit, every day you go, suit, 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 suit. They even do scare you. Why is this guy every time chucked in? Like, you know, you look like a robot. You're talking, you, you'll be walking straight, like, you know. So you, you need to be free. You need to be free. You wear your clothes, you need to be free. You sit down, you know. But in a suit, you're not, it's like you're not comfortable. You put your hand like this, it's like a kite here. It's like, you know, not that we don't like it, but anybody who wears suits a lot, people don't associate themselves with you. They say, oh, this guy, he's different. Oh, she's different. Just leave him or high. So, so we all try to be with something that you're comfortable. So I, I sew suit, but I don't like to wear it every, every day. Because not that... Uh, if I'm working in the office, I should not wear my, my outfit. When I came to Gambia, I saw people wearing a big gown going to the office, and they walk in the offices. So in Sierra Leone, everybody is a suit. You go to the offices, you don't see African attire. So I came to Gambia, I said, wow, so these people, they keep the African culture. So I learned a lot. In Guinea, you see a big educated man wearing African uh, uh, no, outfit. Maybe they have lived in France for years, or in Britain, or in America. But in Sierra Leone, wow, we can be in the British country. So, so that's why I that's, That is really interesting. So uh, your, yeah. your audio is breaking up a little bit, but you're saying th uh, that, that in, um, there isn't a lot of trust in someone who is always wearing a Western suit in Africa, because they associate that with somebody who yeah. is who is perhaps uh, who is a criminal, a white collar criminal, right? Somebody who is finding ways to get <laughs> yeah. bribes, finding ways to get money. Uh, yes, uh, yes, yes. Yes. Uh, and it's interesting that in Sierra Leone, it's more typical to wear a Western suit. But in Guinea and Gambia, you can be a very important professional and wear African clothing. So that's yes. interesting. Now, that suit that we saw, you made that. That's a beautiful suit that you made. Um, it's a challenging thing. I think one of the hardest things to sew is the Western style suit. Um, yes. 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 Mm -hmm. A Western. And, uh, but, you, but that was part of your training to learn how to make this kind of suit as well as to make the African clothing. Yes, I started with men. I, I, I started really sewing for men. But my mother said, if you want to be, you know, remain in this job and get more money, you should go to women. Also for women. So at first, I said, no, I want to be perfect in men and just men. Because you go to Africa, you see men, so there are tailors who sew for only men. You ask them to sew for a woman, they don't know nothing. So my mother advised me, I think you, you're going to like this job, but you need to change. Go to women too, because women wear more things than men. If I buy a suit now, it's going to take me years to buy another one. For a woman, birthday parties. Naming ceremonies. Oh, this clothes is old. I need a new one. So I'll get more, and I'm getting money from women than men, even here. Women fix more clothes than men. But a man, if I fix their pants one this year, maybe next year, I will not see them next year. I will not see them in the following year. One day again, I see them. So how am I going to survive? So I have to go with women. All right. OK. Jill, why don't you bring up the next slide?
All right. So okay, yes. yes. You see, like this is batik. This were the the grants that I did, uh, 2016 to 17. Uh, yes, 2016 to 17 when I did the grant. You see a, a girl wearing a yellow there, and this boy wearing brown. The girl can wear the, the brown too, and the boy can wear the yellow too. It doesn't matter. It's just a dress. It's just a color. So these are batik. You have the, the batik that are the, the that is hard, but when you wash it, it's normal cotton. So the, these are normal dresses. Why Africa we are not used to suit 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 because it's like you, if you wear suit, you look like a robot. You just, you're like stuck. But when you wear this free clothes, you are free. You don't care about where, uh, you know how you're 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 taking your strikes. But like you come, I came here, I see ladies wearing suits with a skirt. When they are taking their feet, you see them walking like, like you know, they are like electro, ele electronic. They are, they are, they are timing. But you see, you go to Africa, you see women with big clothes. They can run. They can uh, they, they can do things in, because they are free. You don't need to be to be tight inside your 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 outfit. But it's is a different. I, I learned from uh, Sierra Leone, came to Guinea and Gambia. So all that, and now I'm learning here. I combine everything together. Now I have to go with anybody, anybody, uh, whatever you want. I go. I do it for you. If you want a, a, a long skirt, I make it for you. you want a short skirt? Hey, I want money. I'm not looking for what you're wearing. I look for what I'm getting from you. So I don't criticize you. You have a short skirt, a long skirt, a mini skirt. <laughs> you're tight. You want a close tight. When I saw some folks, some, some students, high students here, high school students, I say, no, I, I need this for my prom. I say, why do you want it so tight? Said, That's how I want it. I said, it's so tight. You look like you're stuck inside. You, you can't even shake. They say, oh, this is why I want it. I say, okay. I'll do it for you because I want the money. I'm not looking, I'm not the one wearing it. I want that money. So if I make it for you, I'll make it so tight when I see them. I'm, I'm even ashamed to say I'm always sorry, but they like it. They say, oh, this is how I like it. I said, whoa, if I wear that, it's like I'm dying because I can't breathe in those clothes like that. <laughs> Look at this, how this is free here. But I can't wear something that really fit me and I have to be you know, moving like somebody who is moving. They have to program you like a robot. So that's how I learned all these cultures. And now I put everything together. So it, it is interesting that your art form um, depends on, uh, on a couple of things, that your materials, to you, it's very important to use African fabric. And some of that fabric is batik, yes. so it's hand dyed. I know that that's some of your favorite material to work with. So it's hand dyed. So your, your, yes. your material, your, uh, instead of paints, you're using fabric. Um, and then you're also creating art that has to please a customer. Uh, and so you're, you, yeah. you are also have to collaborate with your client on whatever they want. Um, and that it's very important yeah. to you that it's something that they are comfortable in. Even though you would never be comfortable in something perhaps as tight as they would want it, you know that it's important that they love it because it's for them. Uh, yes. But I also know that you will help people decide what, what, to, what to get as well. So if somebody isn't yes. sure, you will suggest yes. things um, yes. and you'll but help for people. Color. Yes, for, for colors and uh, the type of, like a, this uh, fashion, fashion uh, uh, book that I have, that I can choose. Sometimes I'll choose for you, sometimes I won't because I don't know whether you will like it or not. So I have to go with your, your, your uh, opinion, your suggest. I yes. won't go deep. Mm -hmm. I'll just tell you, this is, I think this will be nice. But if you see, insist that this is what I want, I want the money. I don't want to be arguing with you. Right. I want you to give me the money so I can make something that you like. Right. Because and I'm not where I'm wearing. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I think it's important to, to mention that when you, you, that you use a fashion magazine or a photograph, you do not, um, you use that as a guide because you don't get a paper pattern um, and follow that. You know, you can just look at a picture and know exactly how to create the garment that will look like it. Uh, that if you want, yes. uh, if you want Ansumana to make you something, you go to him, you can even give him a sketch 
of what you want it to look like and he yes. will he will create it yeah I'll, yes <laughs> exactly yeah and uh, i can make a pattern out of all human beings all human beings we are pattern on our own i don't need to go buy pattern from this drawn fabric kelly you are pattern if i take your measurement you have your own pattern you might have a millions of people look like you but maybe your tie is not the same your your waist is not the same your like your waist more your waist here here your your leg so you, you, you i might say oh this pattern fits kelly but i won't say it fits millions of women no until right. i take their measurement yes so right. we're all pattern on our own uh, one thing that you have told me that I find very interesting, Ansumana, is is how um, yes. that in Africa it's so important to look good, uh, that it's yes. it's important to to look good, and it doesn't matter even if you're poor, even if you're living in a house made out of mud and grass, you know how to look yes. beautiful, and that's so important. Good. Yes. Yeah. And again, uh, like for instance, uh, we, are, we are from chief family. Chief people, uh, chief, they make a special country cloth for them, specially made, like different colors, flying colors. So anybody who is friend with chief family, you want to dress like them, because if we invite you, we don't want you to dress like somebody who's uh, coming to beg us. No. Even if you don't have nothing, you dress like somebody who is having everything. So that, that would, uh, it's like you have confidence that you get it tomorrow. So that's why in Africa, everybody wants to look good. You, you go, these fabrics are expensive in, fabric in Africa, but here it's not next to nothing. But you take this to Africa now, you give it to somebody, they'll be blessing you for the rest of this year till next year because you have given them something that costs money. So everyone wants to look good in their outfit. You go to a tailor, they take your measurement, they make it all in for you. Except if you grow bigger, okay, let me give it to my sister or my brother or my son or my daughter. But you, you, you will keep wearing it for as long as, and these colors are, they are natural colors. Before they, they start in, in, uh, creating and uh, making inks, natural colors we are finding uh, on the trees, from tree, you get the green from the tree. It will never fade because it's natural color. You get brown, brown from uh, trees, brown colors. You get yellow because you have le yellow leaves. You have green leaves. You have brown leaves. When they get old, they become brown. When they are new, it's green. When they're getting old, yellow. When they get old, it's brown. So all those colors are natural colors. So that's how colors created. So yes. that's why we, uh, we Africans, we take the colors very important and we don't mind colors. And it's, and it's also interesting that I think uh, that in America, we have stressed being, we're very casual about the way we dress and, uh, and that very often um, the typical, most people dress so that they don't stand out. Um, but, in, uh, but in Africa, you will even find a very shy person wearing very, very bright very, very bright clothing. Uh, you can be a quiet person, yes. but still wear really bright, even loud colors. Um, and also that it yeah. is, I think, a matter of respect. I mean, it's, it is uh, not just um, personal enjoyment that people want to look good. They look good because it is their way to respect the people around them. Is that, would you say that's true? Yes, yes. Yeah. That yes, it, yes. Uh, the first for instance, when I, I was uh, making the suit for, for uh, Patrick, Patrick Fisher, he said, well, Asumana, I would like you to choose me a color to be out of my comfort zone. I said, what do you mean by comfort zone? He said, I've been wearing suit, 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 black, brown, this, uh, blue, uh, mostly it's black, 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 black. I said, well, that's why you call it your comfort zone. I said, your comfort zone is any color. That's what your comfort zone is. He said, well, uh, those, those were the ones that I was used to. I said, okay. Now choose this color. So he chose uh, a color. Then I say, among this fabric, which one do you think will, will fit you? He chose a color that has pink inside. And he said, okay, I'll choose a pink suit and a pink shirt inside. We went to John Fabric, we got the pink uh, material. When I make it for him, he said, I've never wear something different from the suit that I've never normally wear. I said, well, 
you are in your comfort zone already. Not, not that you oh, I'm moving out of my comfort zone, coming into my another zone. No, you are in your comfort. You can wear any color you want. It was, right? it was, and it's a beautiful you, suit. Yeah. It's a beautiful suit. Yeah. And when he wore it, yes. a lot of people took, oh, wow, you look great, they said. I mean, they were, he, uh, and, and, and it was, yes, it was a beautiful kind of salmon colored, um, kind of a, a blush, a darker yes. kind of pink, pinkish orange. Yeah. So let's play, the, let, uh, bring up the next slide, Jill. Yes. And, uh, and there, there you are modeling another piece of clothing on Samana that you made for yourself. Again, beautiful colors, beautiful yes. boutique. And that's an African style suit. Yes, this is, yes, uh, this is called abacus. It's a suit, but in a short sleeve. If you make this for American here, they might be, uh, it might take them very difficult for them to wear this out. Because there will be, uh, sometimes they will be saying, ashamed of wearing it or say, oh, I've never wear, uh, wear something like this. So it's gonna be difficult for them. But for us, this is our suit because it's hot over there. You don't want to be wearing it I'm not, not every house has got AC. The, the, most, the most local AC there is mud house. You build a mud house with mud, everywhere is covered and you touch, you got AC inside your house because it's cold. But if you want to use, uh, use electricity, not everybody can afford to, to get electric. So if you want to be comfortable, you make a suit that is short sleeve. We call it backwards. It's the same as a suit. Three pockets, two, one, two here, and then three up here, and then you it build like a suit, like a suit, all the short sleeve. That's it. But it's like it's a suit. So we we are comfortable in this. Most people where I learned how to sew this in Guinea. Before in Sierra Leone, I was thinking growing up, or even if I have to take over my father as a chief, I'll be wearing suits. People will scare me. Somebody come with their cases for me to come and talk their case. I'm sitting inside a suit. They're not going to come to me and they're going to say, that guy is a crook. Even if I don't crook them. Even if I don't, because they're going to see me. Oh, that guy, I don't even see him inside a, a, a African clothes. Every time he's with a suit. And it's hot here. How is he breathing in that? How is he even, is he comfortable in that? Oh, no, I don't trust that guy. Is his opinion. And <laughs> that message will go out. Oh, do you know that chief there? Yes, he's always inside his suit. Where is he come from? Or where, where is he from? He's an African. But why does he dress like a white, white man? <laughs> well, we don't know. Then that guy, we don't, we should not trust him. So it's our opinion because that's how the West went to Africa. In port, in suit, and they met Africans. We dress normal. So now Africans come to uh, England, they, they learn, they come to America, they learn, when they go back, they're in suit. What, what, what would they do? They don't work, but they sit and, and get rich. How do they get rich? From people. So they take you as a criminal. Even if you own a land, you're working, because you don't have to go to a farm with a suit. Nobody will go to a farm with a suit. Even if you're a really, really good farmer, you're not gonna wear a suit. You are tipped up with a nice shiny shoe. You go to a farm and you start brushing. They're gonna think you are crazy. They're gonna say, "What's wrong with this guy? He can he be comfortable there because he won't get air." So they see people with suits on uh, dress tipped top as a criminal. Don't don't get me wrong. Not not that uh, everybody thinks so, but that's how our forefathers thought. Yes, perhaps because that's how are, when they went there. Would it be fair to say that they don't trust somebody who's wearing a suit all the time because they're not working with their hands? They're not, uh, they, yes. Perhaps, yes. They're lazy. They call them lazy people. <laughs> they call them lazy people. Yeah. And, and uh, in, in Africa, to be a leader, you don't just have to come with your degrees. You have to be ready to fight because it's, before, it's fight. You, you, you say you want to be a leader? I say I want to be a leader. Okay, come out here. Come and fight. We'll fight until the fight defeat you. I'm the leader. But here, I can just go to college, Harvard, and get my degree and come and start talking. Everybody will trust me. Not there. As a simple small guy will just knock you out because you have to be strong. What if they come and attack you? Where you have no security, no uh, secret service, no security guard. How are you gonna defend yourself? And you are the leader. 
But now, this is our own world today. You have to get a bodyguard. In Africa, chiefs don't get bodyguard. They got uh, guardians to guide them. But if you come to one-to-one, -to -one, they can defend themselves. If you can't, that means why are you ruling us? What if something, somebody come and attack? You're going to run away and leave us here? No, you, you are not fit. They'll put you aside. But the, the world is changing. Everything is changing. So if I go now, I'm, a, I'm an American. I said I want to take over my father's place. Everybody would support me. Oh, this guy is from America. Oh, but one year, two years, they see me in suits. Every time suit, suit, we don't trust him. He's going to take our money to America. Right. <laughs> because I've been here. Right. <laughs> That's how they would think. Well, the, when you See, talk about uh, got the white here. you're talking about everything changing, I think this is a good place to, to bring up the last slide and to say what the most what you said was the most important thing, and that is uh, passing on your tradition and how important that is to you. Yes. And there you are working with one of yes. your students. Yes. yes. Tell us a little bit about why um, why you want to pass on this uh, African clothing tradition. Yes, in Africa, we believe in uh, when you know something, you should pass it on to somebody else. If you learn, if you know about God, teach somebody else about God. Not that they don't know that God exists, but maybe they don't have the real, the real concept about how God, who is God, what God does, what he does in miracles he does in people's life. But if you teach them, they will one day also teach somebody else. That's how uh, passing a trade on editing, they, they, even the leadership. My, my, my great-grandfather was a chief, my, my great-grandfather, my father, they all combined them both. So it's like a, uh, if you have a combined name inside your, inside your family, um, uh, you will be the chief. So I have brothers, they are, but they are not combo. I'm the only one who falls in that combo. So I should take over my father because that name is the one that should be the chief. Not because of uh, the name is the other one, but because the first man who settled in that uh, area in Mansundu was Kumbabibu. So he passed it on to, he's got another child called, another son called Kumba. So he named him also Kumbabibu, he used to be the chief. That one also have a son called Kumba. So the name him Kumbabibu, so he passed on. So, that's how they pass on things. If I learn, I struggle to learn the job, but I, learn, I taught a lot of people in, in Gambia, not Guinea, but Gambia, I taught a lot of people. You get, uh, girls, boys, now they are doing this for their living. When I came here, nobody is interested. Everything is from China. I don't want to wear things from China. I want to wear something that I make myself in Africa or America here. Now I'm in America, all what I make here when I'm going to Africa, I take everything and give to my brothers. I don't give them American things. I give them things that I make. Oh, where did you get this? I say, I make this. Oh, so, so you're doing this now? Yes. Because if I take a t-shirt, I take a jean, they come from China. They did not show it here, the America here. It come from China to here. So I'm taking something for you that I make. So when you wear it, all these suits that I make, I take them. When I come back, I make new ones. That's how you pass your culture. You learn, you pass it, the trade to people. Now, not for me. I've already got the, 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 the talent, the skill. But I need to pass it on to people who, who can make cutting for themselves. You know, make your own, your own pillow, your own, uh, something that you can make, cut your, your father, your mother's uh, dress, fix it. So that you can know, you will know, you can do something for somebody else. When you do it, it makes you happy. That's how. That's what makes me happy. That's I can sew here for free and give it to people. Yes. Yeah. Just for you to wear it, and I, it make, when I sew for Kelly, Kelly wears it one day, I saw her on TV. I was dancing by myself. I said, <laughs> thank God. I've never made something that I see somebody wearing it on TV. So now I'm in America here. I've seen that. I said, wow, this, I'm going to keep this. So that's how it is. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Aunt Samana. It's really, really wonderful. We've covered a lot of territory. Uh, I know I learned more about African culture, thanking, uh, thanks to you. And it, and it gave me um, things to think about our own culture and how it's different. Um, so uh, 
And there'll be, t if for anybody who wants to stick around after the service um, and has questions for Ansumana, we can have them, uh, uh, he can answer them after the service. So uh, now that there's a time in our service, uh, Tasana, if you want to get ready um, to play another song, uh, and Christine, you can introduce this next part. Hi. This is the time in our service when we share joys and concerns with each other using the chat box. And it doesn't have to be a joy or concern. It can just be something about what you're feeling or how you're thinking about today. Um, I just wanna remind everyone not to respond directly to any one post. This is our time just to bear witness. Following this, there'll be a moment of silence. And then I'll do a brief summary of what we all put in the chat box. And Tisana, uh, can you play Alala K for us? And Alala K is a song uh, that Tisana told me says that everything comes from God, whether it is three feet of snow, uh, drought, or the coronavirus, all comes from God, and it is pointless to complain. We must embrace these things even if we don't like them. So, Tasana, are you with us? Can you unmute and play Alalake?
Beautiful. Thank you so much, Tasana. Uh, now we thank have. You. Thank you, Tasana. Now you'll play one more in a little bit, a short one, Kara. Kara. Yes, but not yet. And uh, but, but let's let's do a little. Uh, we'll do a short Kara in a little bit. But wait, not yet. Okay. So okay. now we'll we'll have a moment of silence. And uh, Christine. Well, there's a, a definite theme in our chat box today. And that theme is beauty. Uh, people talked about the beauty of our service today, the, the beauty of the clothing 
and the music that Tumana and Tasana have brought to us, the beauty of Africa and of diversity and even loving life and the beauty of life. Um, people express their gratitude to Ansumana and Tasana and for the service and how fortunate we are to have you here with us in Erie and also gratitude to Kelly for putting this all together. So uh, beauty was really the big theme. There are also two other personal um, announcements. Uh, Edie shared that her daughter got married in August and Al shared that he has a letter to the editor in today's Erie Time News. So that's, if I missed anyone, I'm sorry, but our, our overwhelming theme is beauty. Thanks. Thank you, Christine. And our closing words uh, that Beth Copay will lead. Our closing words, a call from the present by Tanya Marquez, a minister at the first UU church. The voices of our people call us now. The world harbors their joys and their sorrows. We hear the cries of our people demanding justice. In that call, we recognize the voices of those who wander in the desert, the border crossers, the navigators, the justice seekers, the dreamers, and the hopeful. We weave our story to the story of our ancestors right here, right now, we are in the midst of responding to the call that comes from all corners of this land, from the south, the north, the east, and the west. We are called to sustain the work. Good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. And well, to uh, the extinguish the, the chalices, Beth? Oh. <laughs> call from the future. Good bike? Yeah. The voices nice. of those who will be call us a reminder of who we need to be in the weaving of our story to the web of life we must remember that we must not cut for cut the strings for there are others coming after us others with tender hearts and strong wills with creative determination those who will live in the house of tomorrow their vision escapes us Yet we are called to prepare the road to leave behind possibility, the foundations upon which they'll build a better tomorrow. We are called to create new opportunities. Thank you, Beth. So uh, this uh, Antumana's presentation was uh, funded through a grant uh, to Erie Arts and Culture from the Doris Duke Foundation for Islamic Art. And, uh, and I'm, because we're getting this grant funding, it's very important to give them data on uh, how the project is going. And so during the postlude, I will start a poll. Um, it's an anonymous poll, an anonymous survey um, to get your feedback on Ansumana's presentation. So Tasana, can you uh, do uh, maybe just for two or three minutes, uh, Kera, the song about um, the song of hope. You said Kera is a song of hope. It says that blessings are coming. Uh, good things will come in the future. We can hear you. We can see you. I don't yeah. see. Yeah, yeah. We can <laughs> see you. All right. Kara. <laughs> Pura 
That was beautiful. Thank so, you. Yes. So we want to especially thank Tasana Kumar thank you. and the Ansamana for their presentation. We want to thank our digital ushers, uh, Annette, Nancy, Christine, uh, and Dixie. We want to thank Brian Head. Um, and we want to uh, thank uh, everybody who attended this morning. Thank you so much. Um, uh, and oh, and to thank Jill Johnson for being the screen share usher. Uh, next, the next two weeks, we're going to take a break. So we won't have a formal service, but Dixie Mora will be hosting a little social time.